this is Mercedes updated B-Class and the B-Class has never really been their primary seller. It is a five door hatchback bigger than the A and not a C-Class in between the two. This one is powered by a 1332cc petrol powered engine. Not to 100 kilometers an hour, around about nine seconds. Not going to light your fire too fast. 200 newton meters of torque is okay, about 130-ish brake horsepower under the bonnet. So that's that's doing okay but that's not really what the b-class is about it's about a family five door stylish hatchback it manages to be stylish but to make it this style in ireland it has what's called an amg pack and the amg pack gives you a lot of kit and bits and things and actually a different exterior on the car as well but the amg pack is four thousand five hundred euro on top of the price of the car so this car starts out about 28 grand this one is more like 38 grand so there's about 10 grand's worth of options on it to make it look the way it does now that aside it is actually a pretty good car and if you're interested in finding out more about it you can click the subscribe button and make sure that you see all of the reviews around this channel but right now we're going to crack on with the interior of this little baby you see the interior of mercedes has been a bit lackluster over the years just as the way they've put their cars together it hasn't been fantastic but now everything's different, and I mean everything is different. I have these little headlights on a dashboard that look like the front of a Mercedes car. It says the start system over here as well. I have a touch pad thing here in the center. I have a lot going on in this car. The lot going on continues with all kinds of features within the car. So I have a touch pad here that controls this little screen up here. And then I have, like from that screen, it looks like one integrated panel, but they're actually a tiny screen in a big panel. This length of a panel actually only has very small screens inside. I have a club box over here, very decently sized. I have cubby holes in front of me with two cup holders in it, and then a sort of a, a dumpy cubby hole behind that. USB-C is the only connector in this car. You cannot connect one of these without having an alternate version of it. So you need to have either a converter to convert to USB or buy a whole new cable for your phone if you want to use Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay is in the car, as is um, Android Auto. Now, seating position is extraordinarily good. Very, very good. I like the way this car sits. I feel nice and huggy behind the wheel. The seat holds me nicely as well I, it feels sporty i don't want to use that word too much because it's a b-class so i don't really want to say sporty too much because it's not a sporty car uh, when you start it up you get a very quiet petrol engine because it's the 1.3 little petrol engine comes on now um my phone is connected but it's not connected one because i'm using to record the audio this screen here in front of me does actually change to be all kinds of things you can click x on stuff and you can go into different modes and different uh systems Sorry, the air conditioner is going to come under quite loud, which I can turn down. Stop there, stop. Uh, so this has the mild hybrid system built into it as well. I'm able to see what, what the system is up to, whether it's charging or not charging and so on, and what my range is. Fuel gauge on the bottom. This screen is nice and adaptable. This screen is, uh, you click on the home button. It's a beautifully clear screen. I have to say hats off to the Bluetooth response, the sound, audio sound of someone on Bluetooth phone extraordinary sounds like they're sitting beside you in the car with you very very good um this has this little touch pad here that i can use to go back and forward across the menus no um sat nav built in none of that sort of stuff uh small little screen as well the it is a touch screen as you can see here i can touch on things and i can open up stuff so this is also a touch screen and does everything you want on touch screen or pad but the heating controls are still on a manual system here, dual zone climate control, uh, auto system built in as well. Three blowers across here, two on either side out there. And then you have the center console armrest in here with another USB-C connector in here. And again, no way of converting that. There's no alternative, as I've seen in other cars where they've put one single USB port and then USB-C throughout the car. Um, uh, Mercedes have just gone straight to USB-C, which I, I think is quite an oversight. I know a lot of Mercedes customers will be very likely to buy the latest trend or the latest thing, but it's, I think it's a bit of an oversight. In this one as well, there is a sunroof, so I can open this and it opens as a roof that folds together, which is quite nice. I do like that. It does add a little bit more brightness to an otherwise fairly dark interior. 
but there is some beautiful equipment in here and really really well equipped i have to say hats off mercedes i don't feel like i'm sitting in a b-class anymore i feel like i'm sitting in something a little bit more luxurious than that particularly with the alcantara on the doors here and in the seats it's very nice anyway let's see if a family can fit into the back seat of this car for some reason i keep singing a theme tune from bergerac Anyway, the back seat of this is set up for me, so when I get in here, I have loads of room, a good fist between me and a seat in front of me. I have two blowers here in the back seat as well, which means I can control the air to the back seat, um, but I can't control the temperature or anything about that. Little shelf below that, and below that's a little pull-out box with a box on one side and two USB-Cs again, which is in the same thing. Little net on the back seat, uh, a one electric wheel on this side, a one on that side obviously as well. And then in the center here, I have a armrest with um, little cup holders here in the front, which are fully out ones. Very complicated, Mercedes. Did it really have to be that com complicated? That's a lot of stuff that'll break, just saying. Uh, no ski loader through here that I can see, but you can drop the whole back seat here in a 60-40 style. Hmm. Well, there it goes. So you can look straight into your boot here where all my stuff is. It's two hand actually, in far as I can pull it in here if you wanted to. Um, this part of the seat actually falls down as well and it's very easy to push back up. There she is. Oh, oh. Look, see, see, cup holder stuck out. Anyway, um, headrests on all sides. You have isofix on two seats and uh, this seat here is just a standard seat belt. Kind of a leather red feeling, that is. Like not real leather, but that's okay. Some people don't like real leather. Some people don't want an animal kill to make their car. That's fine by me. Back seat, pretty good for two passengers back here. Third passenger will find it a little bit uncomfortable. Door opens quite wide though, I quite like that. That's good. There's plenty of space to put things in, you know. To the boot. The boot. Well, it's a standard boot here. This one has an electric tailgate on it. So I can go up like that, which is cool. But other than that, the boot itself is just a box, and that's exactly what you want the boot to be, really. You don't need it to be anything else. This carpet lifts up underneath that. You have another hole that you can fit stuff into as well. Now, in there is the battery and the emergency stuff, which is common in Mercedes. There's no spare wheel. There's a little bit more storage underneath there, and that fits back down neatly. You've got a 12-volt socket on that side. You've got a light on that side. You've got two shop mag hooks either side, and that's your lot, pretty much. That is the boot spaces in here. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. It is, it's wide, but it's not tall. So it's not very big, uh, but it's big enough, I suppose, for most jobs you want to do. Right, let's get this baby on the road. Put something to the test first for that. Oh yeah, when it hits your shoulder, it does go back up, yeah, it does. So if you're in the boot and somebody claws it on you, see, you don't get killed by it. Isn't that good, isn't it? It's not really good. Some of the car companies don't do that so well. Test yours, see if it does it. Anyway. Let's rock and roll. So starting up the B class is actually quite a little nice experience. I know that may seem really small thing to say, but it is. It's it greets you in a nice way. It's not trying to be anything it isn't. It just is what it is. It's it's a five door hatchback that is uh, actually all right to drive. Now I do find the steering is incredibly light. Like that steering wheel feels like a place in front of me. So, not to 60 is dealt with, well, not to 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour is dealt with in around about nine seconds. That's okay for a 1.4 or 1.3 engine. That's actually all right. It's the right quality I quite get a surprise from. Uh, normally, German cars are very firm, you know, in comparison to French yoke, they really are very firm and hard on the road. This isn't so bad, I can still feel that German firmness, but it is somewhat kind of tempered out a little bit with a five-door hatchback softness, so it feels nice. Steering wheel is absolutely gorgeous thing to hold on to, I really do like that. Uh, and I have flappy paddle box, not that you're ever going to use them. You've got different modes as well, so you've got these little dynamic things you can go into if you really want to do something. Most people put it in comfort and never change the setting ever again, as long as they shall live. When you hurry the engine, it really does start to sound loud. Now, like I say, with these little modes here, so I have comfort, which is default setting. 99.9% .9 of you will never change it from that setting. Then you have sport, which makes the car kind of sit up and pay attention. Uh, it also 
knocks that gearbox back a couple of cogs the whole time so it's always sitting there in fifth ready to go uh, then you have individual which you can set for yourself you can do what you want and then you have interestingly eco which immediately settles the whole car down and puts it in the highest gear possible now there is a seven speed box in this uh, it's needed because it doesn't cruise very nicely i don't think it cruises very nicely on the motorway uh, at higher speeds it does sound like it's it's under pressure you know it's two and a half thousand rpm at 120 kilometers an hour so it does feel a bit under pressure but around the town around the short journeys keeping it under 100 kilometers an hour or around 100 km an hour mark it it gets on quite nicely with the job media interface is beautiful to look at and lovely looking thing and very easy to use because obviously it's a touch screen and a touch pad down here so it's pretty straightforward to use but the main controls are the heating controls that you adjust a lot and that's really straightforward to use sound system is brilliant i have to say the bluetooth response when i was talking to someone on the bluetooth earlier on it did sound like they were sitting right beside me it, very 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 clear so there's obviously some sort of manipulation going on there the new stalks behind the ones that control the gear shift and all they haven't changed the setup of those stalks so the set the stock still does windscreen wipers and indicators on the left and then just gears on the right there isn't it doesn't do to no other function out there um that hasn't changed but the stalks themselves have become thinner and cheaper feeling just a little bit I have to say, overall, it is a surprise. I didn't expect so much to be offered from Mercedes in this car. Would I buy this over a Golf or something similar in that sort of similar five door hatchback thing? You get a bit more headroom in this, I have to say. There is also the badge knob that comes out to me every once in a while and kind of goes, well, I am driving a Mercedes. I have a three-pointed star here in front of me. Um, so that, that will play a factor. But as a five-door hatchback, it's actually quite practical and very useful and pretty good fuel economy as well for a petrol five-door hatchback. If you were driving the short journey stuff back and forward to the shops and dropping the kids to school and stuff, yeah, I don't see why this would be a problem. Uh, if you were going to munch on a motorway every single day, then I would best avoid the little petrol engines in this. It does feel under pressure on the motorway. Hopefully by now you have watched this entire video and you've got to this point and gone, why haven't I subscribed to this guy before? Because he's very good. So if that thought struck your mind, there's a big red button down there. Click subscribe, click the bell beside it if you wouldn't mind as well. Uh, you can join us every Sunday because this channel really has kind of blown up over the last few months, uh, last couple of years I suppose. Um, lots of people join us for a live stream every Sunday for two hours from 2 p.m. Uh, GMT, uh, so Greenwich Mean Time, which is out of date these days, I know, but I grew up with GMT. Uh, so 2 p.m. GMT, you can uh, find my channel will light up with a lovely live stream. Uh, thousands of people do join in and ask questions, and I stay until I've answered all the questions. Sometimes that's more than two hours. Sometimes that's two and a bit hours. But whatever it is, you can join it every Sunday. It's a good laugh. It's a good crack. It's where lads be lads and girls be girls. And we all hang out together. And they're all anonymous and having a bit of fun. Uh, it's good fun. It really is. So join me every Sunday there uh, on the Sunday service. Uh, hopefully you've learned all you need to know about the B class. There's millions of other videos to watch on my channel. Well, not millions. There's 600 and something other videos to watch on my channel. It'd be great if you started watching them all. Binge watch them. Uh, if you're interested in electric cars, there's an electric car playlist. If you're interested in international launches, there's an international launch playlist where I fly all over the world to test cars. Uh, and then there's just a kind of homegrown stuff like this one where I test things right here in Port Leash in the middle of the Ireland. Literally, the geographical centre of the country. Now... There you are, up yours at loan. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed all of this, uh, but until the next time, uh, we'll see you on the far side.